Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Castle Redux. I'm your host, Mr. Iceland Lever, but we got quite a few comments to go through. But at the end of last episode, I asked you whether we should go with the traditional conservatives, the center nationalists, or the right or radical nationalists. And there's quite a few comments which we'll address after we get choose. But overall, at the time of this recording, at 1.41 p.m., well, there's more support for... Elder and the Rightus. So we're going to go this route for, for now. Um, no, I can't please everybody, but we're going to go this route with the beginnings of a new saga. After much debate and political jockeying, Elder Kavaran and his cadre of Rightus have taken control of the Nationals Party. Pledging a return to the old ways, Kavaran and his clique have left the nation enraptured by a vision of Iceland strong, independent, and traditional. Suffice to say that many are wondering how much of this wild declarations are fake, if any of them are. Well, look at this guy. He's got a hat. And there goes the Republic of Ireland. But once we are done with that, we shall go with, of course, dealing with this guy, or the Land of Thule. Which, I don't want to lose any political power. We already don't get even get one a day, but that is what it is. Um, our Sonic Allegiance, we can't do that one, which sucks. We can go this way, though. Well, I guess dealing with Astandid. As the English occupied her soul, they had their way with their women. Until thousands of rapes were committed for who would ever want to sleep with an occupier. Many of these crimes spawned children. Children now threaten our nation's future with their very existence. This situation, as it's called, needs to be addressed as soon as possible. But some comments include, Vacuum paths are fun, but United Scandinavia might let you play with a nation that actually functions. Plus, manpower is good, too. Someone says, uh, 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 This person wanted me to go to the center to get Scandinavia, but recommends the traditional path even though you won't go Scandinavian. So he recommended that we could grow more radical each time you play through this campaign or this playthrough, uh, which would be an interesting thing. So that would be very interesting. So I apologize if we're not going out of that route for now. It is what it is. I just, you know, get your guys' input. And uh, you guys recommended Return of the Vikings. So, um, yeah. If you're going to go Viking LARP, you might as well go full on. So let's go Radical National. So why hold back, as else someone else said as well. So someone else said, hey, Mr. Mucklover, I love listening to your videos while going to videos. Can you play Godspeed, A Flame for the Winter, someday? It's a cool new Hoi 4 mod. I think you like it. Well, yeah, let me know about new mods that come up and around, because I'm totally open to new things like that. Um, yeah, that sounds like fun. Just let me know uh, what you guys recommend, and maybe we'll get there. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. You never know. As expanding your industry, uh, you lose 200 manpower, but you get you do get a factory, which is pretty nice. As you can tell, we don't really have a lot of manpower as is, as we're trying to expand the hydroelectric station. You know, the Laxa Dalur Valley is a prime candidate for construction of new hydroelectric power plants. It's a very good thing as we're trying to build up more cities, too. Industry-wise, we're doing, we're doing all right. Not great, but just all right. This guy, well, this guy can definitely grow more uh, fish hair than I can, but whatever. A booming economy, huh? It's be nice to have, though. Yeah, we need a little more party popularity. I hope that there we'll get more, which I think we will, but you never know. Uh, 1938, we get all that stuff there. Infantry stuff is done. Um, I kind of like recon. Anti-air would be pretty decent to get as well. We get some casts, maybe. We're going to have to get bombers this way, so. But the beginnings of a new saga. And I guess the land of Thule. To many people of ancient times, they were simply Thule, the great and unknown north. We were the land of barbarians and monsters where few lived long. To many today, that view has not changed much. Knowing anything is a privilege that few can even reach, or even care to reach. We can use that to our advantage and spend wild stories that would strike fear into our enemy's heart. The Saga of Kvaran. Although more an aptitude of the other factions more than their own admittedly growing popularity, Eidor uh, Kvaran and his writers have taken control of the outing. In a fiery two hour and a half long speech, Elder rallied against a degenerate socialist for poisoning the minds of the workers. He uh, railed against the moderate conservatives to bowing to business interests over their own country, and he railed against nationalist militaries for caring more about power than restoring Iceland Icelandic pride. He then went off on a profusely long winded and, if reports to be believed, profusely boring tangent about how modern society was just as poisonous as a socialist and declaring Iceland was better off when it's sticking to the old ways. Without really clarifying what old ways was, he was specifically referring to, of course, he then marched triumphantly out of the outing to total stunned silence, a fire in the coal. The Icelandic state will be known as Sogoya. Awesome. Status of those Angloids. When the socialists hold power, they allow British soldiers onto Holy Ice and a war off driven pressure. These degenerate limeys then force themselves onto the pure hearted Icelandic women and spawn many mongrel half breeds. These half breeds have become a problem in our new nation. Some see them as a stain on the nation's honor. An entire race of degenerate Anglo sympathizers who will sell their own mother down the river for the benefit of Iceland's enemies. They have come up with some rather severe solutions to this problem. Others, however, point out that the state sanctioned child killing makes them no better than the socialists. Instead of pointing out as kids, they are malleable. They instead suggest that a minor fine be levied upon the parents for their miscegenation and put them into the state-run schools where they can be forged into model Icelandic citizens, part Anglo or not. Minor fines and try to raise the kids right. Put them against the wall. 
I like being a radical. I really do. Um, but let's bring Ariosophy to Iceland. Ariosophy is almost no presence in Iceland. Uh, so being so far away from the ideology's birthplace in Austria and the fact that many Icelanders are poor as dirt means they don't know of and don't care about what some old monk thinks, but they should. Ariosophy brings forth the fundamental truth of the world, the truth of the genetic strength of Icelanders as pure Aryans. We'll introduce our people to the strength as once more. Political power, consumer goods, we listen some factory output, but you know what? That is a-okay with us. You know, you gotta give a little, to, you know, to get, get a little bit. Actually, I'll come over here and do this to you. That's better. And land of Thule, quarter now, bring Ariosophy to Iceland, but A, I have no idea how to pronounce this. Portablot to make Thor proud. The Thorablot of old were wild affairs full of parties, orgies, and sacrifices. The blots are still celebrated today, but due to the corruption of Christianity, they are rather duller than they once were. As we return Iceland to the old days of strength, we shall inject some life into the Thorablot once more and bring Iceland just that much closer to paradise. And paradise it will be. As we have about 15,000 manpower, our divisions are not bad. I'm glad we spawned these northern guards. Their 18 combo is pretty good. With support, artillery is actually very, very strong. But like I said in the last video, I'm probably going to have to use comms commands. Just because uh, we're only Iceland still, you know. And we have a core population of 120,000. And we're also disarmed. So, oh, what is that actually? Oh, wow, they're not looking good, not looking good in America. Receive weekly manpower 450. Is that like a national spirit? Grand opening of the hydroelectric dam. Today marks the, oh boy, um, completion of the Laxastrog hydroelectric dam or plant. Um, this singular plan has the capacity to quadruple our local power production on the island. May this new achievement help drive the recovery of our people and propel us to a new and greater heights. Oh man, Danish bailout is really helpful. The economy shambles. Denmark has graciously decided to help support us in our time of need. Until 45? To brighter future. Awesome. Until 1945, holy crap. Urban communities supported. We also have optimized farms, which is good. We have strong outing, which is not bad. Foreign fish trades, the land of ice and snow. Icens. Oh, northern recruitment drive. Ah, oh, that's what we have. Uh, Iceland's a unique nation, uh, unlike any other in the world. No other nation can claim such a direct line of heritage to our, the past is ours. Our language remains much like it was a thousand years ago. Our people live in land many would consider inhospitable with little issue in Viking blood courses through our veins. In this land so distant from them, even in an era of such rapid communication, our land still remained mysterious to most across the world. In the ancient tongue of the Romans, we were known as the Thule. The farthest northern reaches of the world, the Romans and the Greeks saw our land as nearly inhospitable, and yet we remain. We shall demonstrate our strength for all the world to see and re re revel in their fear. The White Wolf. Awakens. Odin's court. In faraway Austria in the early 1900s, two men, Liebenfels von and von Liszt, realized uh, that a long-standing fact covered up by the world and its puppet masters, this is the fact that the Aryan Europeans, those like us, were superior to all others. Before the corrupting institution of Christianity, we ruled the world. We harnessed the fantastical forces of might and the sun, and with our power, none could stand up against us. However, after the false Christian gods took over the world, our magic and power waned until we were debased enough to be ruled over by the lesser beings. Our proud ancestors on the continent have been entirely annihilated by the constant force of miscegenation. With the beast men here, however, in perfect and pristine Iceland, our isolation has left us the last pure-blooded Aryans on Earth, the last of an endangered super race. Such beliefs were once an extreme minority, only held by only by a few people. Now, however, with their strength once again plain for all to see, more and more people are flocking to our cause. Everywhere people go are now waking up to their long dormant power and flocking to our cause. Every new soul wakes and it's another vessel of power that strengthens all of us. We shall strike down the beast as Thor strikes the sky. I love stability. As we're currently going to do that, port of lot to make Thor proud, but found in the Asatrufer Flagged. I totally can speak this language. As Ariosophy catches on in our nation, it has become requested that some sort of organization be founded to further cultivate its growth. The Astaru Fellowship, that will be that program, of course. It will introduce all loyal and smart Icelanders to the illustrious heritage and awaken that ancient fury that once drove us to such greatness. And it will replace Ariosophy, which we just got over here. Oh, Land of Ice and Snow, which became Icelandic Ariosophy. And then we'll replace that with Asatsularfelagio. Diga. Dwa. Uh, more political power. Gonna really hurt our consumer goods, though. More stability. Get worse cap. But get Valhalla calling. Um, where are we at with this? So this one, it's not bad. It's pretty good for consumer goods. This one, hopefully it'll maybe change it a little bit. I don't know. That stability is pretty nice, though. That's really strong stability. It hurts our output, though, which I don't like, but, you know, whatever. Um, and I'm, as long as we got political power, I'm going to keep going with civvy stuff, because I want to keep building ourselves up. Spanish is not bad, but I'm going to save every available man that we possibly can. At the same time, though, 
probably want to go to War Country, but I guess we can't. Um, I'm not sure if we want offense or defense yet. I really just don't know. I would like to get more army XP to just keep building ourselves up. You know what? Let's do that first. Let's do that, and then we'll get another military factory or city or whatever. I think that'd be probably be for the best. Uh, home rule party, huh? Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, only a week left. Yeah. It's 1939. The world's going to explode. And, yeah. We'll see what happens, you know? I'm not going to take the... I mean, obviously, I, I want to do well in this campaign, but I'm not going to take it too seriously if, if we really do have to use cons commands, but... Whatever. There goes Ottoman Empire. You're having fun, huh? I bet they're having loads of fun. The, the Istanbul Pact with Azerbaijan. Cairo Axis. I've never played... Have I played as Egypt? I don't think I've played as Egypt. For I hate, I hate, hate, hate that the Commonwealth is formed and they're losing. I mean, just look at this guy. He's had, a, it looks like he's had a rough life. You know, he seems like a good guy. He seems like he's had a, a tough life, but, you know, he's he's getting attacked on all sides. The card's doing okay. They got rid of the black belt. The CSA is doing very well, like normal. Look at Kingdom of, he just looks so happy just smoking. As a happy smoker. How many people can say they're so happy when they smoke? Israel? Wait, what? Wait, how do we, hold up, hold up. The sort of blah, but are you Jewish? Simeon Guggen Guggenheim. I gotta play as Alaska, bro. But the sort of blah. The sort of blah is a traditional Icelandic midwinter face with roots like many of our festivals. Dating back to time immemorial, as the riders and their ideals swept further into the Icelandic society, the Blot, whose activities have long ago deviated from wild parties, orgies, and sacrifices of yore, once again have rumored to return to the old ways. While major cities have kept the Blot, civilized reports have begun to filter in from the countryside that in some instances these festival festivals have gotten out of control. Reports of parties and orgies lasting days and even animal and human sacrifices have shocked many, including those in Iceland. Some reports even say that the governor itself uh, gathers for its own sort of blood, and they have had some political prisoners shipped in for their own human sacrifice and cultish rituals. These reports have been countered by the government as nothing less than lies by the nation's enemies seeking to bring the nation down instead insists that all reports of sacrifices to be about as fanciful as can be. Nevertheless, many people named and said reports have been reshuffled to less public positions or even fired outright with little fanfare. Praise Thor as the... Vidramaland, our home. Our forefathers discovered America, not the perfidious Albion. Markland, Vinland, Helderland, and even Vidramaland. White people and to the locals. This last one, Vidramaland, has attracted much interest in our administration. Its location, Labrador, makes it possessing it a strategic boon, and beating the old British as well as the new makes that apple even sweeter. Valhalla calling. As more and more people are drawn to our beliefs, we have realized that outside the party, there's no real organization for them. Well, the party's more than enough. Well, look at that. <clears throat> Uh, of a representative. It's not well suited to spreading the truth so much as protecting those who've already accepted it. To remember this, the Azadrufelagigo, or Astaru, Fellowship has been founded. It'll act as a sort of social wing outreach program for beliefs. It'll organize a youth wing, the Youth Fellowship, to instill a love for the lands we've been blessed with by the gods who hiking, exercise, and camping. Not only that, but we could be very obviously teach the truth to the young and malleable minds of the next generation, and we'll believe them no matter what false facts the BC European scientists may claim. Already thousands have joined the fellowship, and many more thousands are waiting to join. It's a study group. Just a study group. Iceland's first domestic meadery. Despite our Viking roots, Iceland has no domestic meadery. We have our own breweries, but even then, it's been hit hard by the times due to the prohibition laws passed in 1915. Luckily, it's one of the 1933 referendums. Beer is once again illegal in Iceland, though it must stay below an alcoholic content of 2.25%. Uh, however, other liquors and alcoholic beverages, including mead, do not have such a restriction as such. We've moved to create our first domestic meadery just outside Reykjavik in order to give our citizens something strong and traditional to drink, further linking them with their ancestral way. In the past, all mead was imported to Iceland from Denmark and Norway, largely because mead's main agreement of honey has been nigh impossible to produce here on the island due to the lack of local beer keepers and apiaries, as well as our harsh climate limiting the growth of the needed spices to flavor the brew. With more modern technology available, though, we've been able to source our own hives and now we're finally able to produce mead locally. By importing bees from famous father-son apiologists from New England, John Harvey Lovell and Harvey Bullfinch Lovell, and by working with Olgergen Eggis Skala Grimson, the oldest, oldest brewery in Iceland established in 1913, we shall establish a local meat industry so that we may breathe life into our own economy while also fulfilling the drinking horn and mugs of our citizens with the sweet amber ambrosia of our ancestors. Too much ale and a man's heart is laid open for all to see. Look at those people. Also, I did turn down the Germans to join their, uh, use the Europa mark, so, because I don't think we're really going to stay with them for that long. Um, it's probably good to go to volunteer only. Yeah, uh, Burma, I'm sorry, we got other things to focus on than that Burma. Mm, I can do this once. Can they take a new factory? Might as well. Two, oh my gosh, 250 days. 
Because we're really trying to expand ourselves as much as possible. And I don't want to go to war because that'll hurt our stability. And we want as much political power, organization, factory output as possible. So, But, I mean, we might have to butt heads later on. Because we, while we are in the Reichsback, so is Sweden and Finland and all them in Denmark too. So, we'll see. We'll definitely see what happens. Um, coming to your stop. We're going to railway trains. Nah, we're good for now. Of course, we're doing our home. But after that, I'm not sure what else we can really do. Um, status quo, social democrats, always false for the connect the islands. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure. Atlantic Isle? Has remained neutral in the Cold War. Oh, Cod War. Oh. Uh, connect the islands? Has remained neutral in the Cod War. Oh. Well then, open the IFIB. National Infrastructure Act. Well, that kind of sucks. Probably get more stuff to do here. Social Insurance Act. That's for stability, but still. <coughs> How much political power do you get here? 0 0.05. Not much. Yeah, okay. Um, Merchant Airport. I mean, 35 days. I mean, all you get is an airbase, which is not terrible for 35 days, but, like, it's not great. Turn inwards. Well, we're not social conservatives anymore. So, uh, really, we'll have to wait and see, because we didn't do any of this route either. Is that it for focuses? That might be it. A new raiding fleet. In order to claim our far-off outlands from the sea, we're going to need a fleet to get there. No matter if we set sail for the New World or for Norway, we must uh, have a new raiding party to carry us to the shores of our enemies. So we shall undergo a massive shipbuilding initiative in order to build the armada we need. From traditional longships updated and refitted to compete with modern patrol boats and other small craft cruisers and subs of our own, we'll build a fleet to rival the great powers themselves, for not even the ra raging male storm of the oceans keep us from our destiny. We'll set sail to glory. Ah, okay, so that's not bad. We got two battleships, two light cruisers, and twelve destroyers. Design-wise, it is okay. It's not terrible, but it's not it's just it's okay. Uh, escort cruisers, the Blonde class. Uh, it's not bad either. It's a it, they're just okay. And these destroyers, not all level one, not great. Well, it's what we got. That's all I can say. It's what we got. So we'll see what happens. Um, obviously, I won't keep expanding your cities. If we can use and abuse our allies, we will to take out Norway. We'll take everything for ourselves, but, you know, whatever. There's only 39, of course, but, you know, we'll see. In Spain, the Saga of the Whites. As their diligent historian pours over documents to prove our superiority to the rest of the world, they've come across a collection of very interesting manuscripts. They date back centuries by describing Skrelly, or Native Americans to the degenerates, accounts of an island called Vibramanlan, or White People Land. The Skrelling said it was inhabited by white men with long poles, shouting war cries and wearing fringes. No, now where this land is exactly is up to is up to some serious debate. It's not like those barbarians do have anything of maps, especially anything close as or as accurate as the ones we have now. Reports are that it's somewhere near Old Vinland, modern-day Newfoundland, or Markland, modern-day Labrador. However, the very broad range of places is Hvetramanlan. It would be is rather convenient. But land was once Atlantic, and it shall be again, no matter where it is. We shall build a true land for white people. Skin as white as snow, hard as cold as ice. Next populous will be known as Hvetramanlan. I hope I'm saying that right. Oh, we'll go to war with Canada and Denmark. Gains core on all of Canada and Alaska. Oh, well, that's kind of cool, man. That's actually very cool. Very cold. Uh, that's the case. Can we just come here and do this and just take, take him out like that? We might be able to. Um, Grand Battle Plan, Mass Assault. A large number of good enough weapons is the path to victory. Well, I don't want to kill ourselves. The Grand Battle Plan for superior firepower. Throwing shells, not men. What would a bunch of Vikings do? Radical Vikings. It seems like Mass Assault might be the way to do. We want to be grand. I think Mass Assault would fit us better, but... Mass Mobilization? Mass Charge? I mean, that makes sense. I think I might just go Superior Firepower. We're going to need everything we're going to get anyways. We're going to need everything we're going to need. Um, anything else here? Oh, Reich's Pack Defense Spear. Oh, that's not bad. That's pretty good. More Division Organization. This would be good to do as well. Oh, actually, proper heritage. It's not nah, it's not bad, too. Political power. Isn't there one that gives us this, like weekly manpower? I think that was for another one. Yeah. we got to go bold attack, though. Nah, I'll get that one anyways. Uh, quick improvisation. That makes sense for us. Overwhelming firepower. As much as I want that one, I really do want that one. Proper heritage. I mean, proper heritage. That just makes sense, but we don't have any cavalry with us. Quick improvisation. I never use this one. Titan speed's okay. Daily command power gain. 
I'm not sure we're gonna actually use it for that stuff. Victory death. I mean, we might lo we might leave the Reichs Pact eventually, but maybe not. Maybe we won this campaign. Maybe we'll stay with them. Flexible organization. Uh, aggressive reconnaissance. Being very aggressive sounds like fun. Victory or death. Um. That seems like a very Viking thing to do. Victory or death. Ah, eh, you know what? Let's do that one. Why not? Go and repair as well. And if we get cast, it'd be great. And for naval stuff, well, I guess fleet and being, because we have no carriers. Our ships are going to die. Oh, look at this guy! Ravarin! So now we have no focuses we can do. Bro, that sucks. But, at the same time, we can build ourselves up hopefully indefinitely. Um, we're going to need more millies. My god, we're going to need way more millies. Let's go buy a millie. I'm sure we're combat readiness of our armed forces. We need to focus on expanding military and sphere of economy. Go! Go, 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 go! How much do we extract? Nothing! We literally extract nothing here! Oh. Well, whatever. Keep it up the road, I guess. I did throw on these guys, uh, engineers. Because engineers are good and... We had enough equipment, too, so... Second Melbourne Uprising, not bad. I want to take these guys out first. Um, before the second Valkyrie starts, then we'll take out Canada, too, hopefully. <coughs> They're doing okay against the CSA. I want them to beat the CSA up first, and then we can go to war them, maybe. We'll see. Uh, artillery. We still have something here now. We have three research slots, which sucks, but whatever. I love what we're wearing. New World Hyperborea. Oh, everyone wants to go to World Germany, huh? Way more stability. Way less factory output, though. Oh, three political power day. Jesus. That's awesome. Uh, they're attacking us down there, too. Well. Alright, so let's save. I mean, I don't know what it's going to be like when we have the entire Reichs back coming against us. Or going towards Denmark, because they usually peace out with everybody else. But if things get a little funky, funky, and in not a good way, then uh, I'll just go to war and kill them off. Or just use cons commands. There you go. Hope they don't auto piece out. And the Germans should be able to help us out here too. Nice. We'll try our best. You know what? Uh, you know what? We're building roads anyways. Do that anyways. Why not? It makes sense to do it now. Hey guys, Sal. Yeah, thanks for the motorized. Nice. Good stuff. Good stuff. Nice. Hey, we're doing... Uh oh. Uh oh. We're doing well against them. Of course, take all the land for ourselves. Oh, they actually went against Melmo. Just don't talk about the grenade attacks that happened there. Anyways. You got it. You got it. Can we take them out by ourselves for the most part? Please? Hey! Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. And these are core, so, right? Well, they should be core states. They're not core states. Do we need to do something about them to get them cored? Oh no. They're not core states. Well, that's not cool. Um. Well, I guess we'll see.
Revenge for former glories, the old Viking raiding parties were incredibly successful, sailing across the northern coasts of Europe and all throughout the North Sea and Scandinavia, out past Greenland into the northern reaches of the New World, beyond the Mediterranean into the North Africa, and even out towards the Volga and the Caspian Sea and Black Seas, or farther north towards Arkhangels. So far did they spread that the Turks and the Barbary pirates even came to our island seeking retribution in 1627 in a series of slave raids called the Turkish Abductions, or the Tiakjarni. With all this martial history and success behind us, and with a renewed Viking spirit and culture, we must decide how far out our new raiding party should go to rebuild our builders' vast fear of influence once again. Sick the nursing fringes. I mean, at this point, there's no way we can actually take these guys all out. Like, from Europe to North Africa, from the Volga to Gibraltar, all former foes shall feel our wrath. I mean, there's no way we could do that. And we were taking a huge consequence to take these guys out already. Um, I kind of doubt there's anything else just because. Oh, we own. Do we own Ireland? No, we own Ireland. Is there anything to record that? We do not fear a few potato farmers. I think that's pretty much it, because there's nothing else here. I've just been sitting here for, like, hours trying to get through everything here. So it's kind of cool seeing what this was like. Um, uh, basically, I had to make sure that Germany would win the, the you know, second Weltkrieg. And then uh, I deleted the Canadian Navy, because there's no way you can invade. I mean, actually, I tried it, and my Navy got blown up. So uh, we basically used consequence. But it's kind of cool seeing what we could do here. Obviously, we could just use, like, annex all and just annex everybody. But, like, it is what it is. But uh, maybe we'll do the Viking Path a couple different times. Um, that'd be cool and all, but yeah, that's pretty much it going to be it. So, if you enjoyed the campaign, uh, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.